Hello and welcome back. My name is Colton from Ankeny Van Builds and today we are going to be going over how to convert your Gasland Chef stove from natural gas to propane and to connect it to a one pound camping propane bottle. I thought this was going to be a very easy task and in fact I wasn't even planning on making a video on it but I spent about five total days trying to find the right fittings, the right sizes of things and looking up and researching how to do it so i figured this would be actually a very informative video and would help out a lot of people so if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button with a notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and let's start this week's video so this is a stove that i have it's a gasland chef two burner black glass top uh, stove when you first get it in the mail it comes set up for natural gas and there's actually quite a bit of things that you have to do in order to convert it to propane so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I did for that first and then I'll piece it all together and hopefully we'll get a working stove by the end of it so one of the first steps is to change these uh, I believe they're called injectors these little tiny brass injectors, they come in this package and the package says LPG injectors. So natural gas is NG, LPG is your propane and that's what we wanna use. So all you do is you take the top off, you take off these little plates here and on the inside, these brass injectors and you wanna swap those out. I use a 90 or 9 and 30 seconds sized uh, wrench and you simply just put this in here you screw them out I've already replaced them but you'll see that the propane injectors have a much smaller hole and on this package it actually tells you if I can get it to focus so the front one the brass fitting had the numbers 0.68 and the top one had 0.93 so I made sure to put those in the correct spot but that is the first step you want to take in swapping these out and you tighten them all the way down don't crank them down but get them to where they're all the way to the bottom and then the next step is with the regulator itself so this regulator can do natural gas or propane so in order to convert this from natural gas to propane you get this take this nut on the top you unscrew it. So when you first get this thing, it'll come set up for natural gas, so the spring will be on the inside. And what you wanna do to make it convert to propane is you unscrew it, flip it around 180 degrees, and screw it back on. And screw it so it's all the way in. And then with your regulator, spring goes in first, and then you tighten it down. Get a wrench, tighten it down a little bit more, and then your regulator is converted to propane now. So we got the injectors converted, and now the regulator. Okay, so now I wanna talk about the complicated part and the part that I ran into all of my issues. So essentially, what I wanted was to get this propane bottle to supply the stove through this regulator and I was trying out different hoses, different adapters. So essentially what happened was, this is what came with the stove. And in my other van, all I did was I purchased this hose right here. It's got the thread with the little nipple, I guess, that threads right into the bottle. And in my other van, this screws right into the stove and it was no problems. So I got that. So I bought it thinking it would work again, and I noticed they're not compatible. So I was like, okay, no big deal. I'll just get a fitting that adapts to that or adjusts to that. So went through Home Depot, found some brass fittings, and I found this one that threads into this, and this that threads into this. And I thought, okay, problem solved. Well, it wasn't the case because this side doesn't have this prong that is supposed to go into that hole to allow the propane to come through. So when I was trying to light the stove, no propane was coming out. 
So I went online, I found the right dimensions and I bought this guy. So this threaded onto this, no problem. And then went to put it into the regulator, doesn't fit. So then I was looking for an adapter that went from this to this and it just simply doesn't exist. It's a different type of thread, so it didn't work. I would love to have been able to leave a link in the bio for everybody to get the right sized adapters, but essentially what I did and what I recommend you guys doing is going to a, a local barbecue fireplace type of store that exclusively sells and makes things that are propane or gas because they'll have all the right tools, all the right fittings. So I went in, I brought them the regulator, I brought them my hose, I brought them the propane bottle, and I said, I just need these to connect to each other. Can you make that happen? So they hooked it up. They got all these different fittings. So this one will go into the propane bottle, threads into this hose, and then on the other end, threads into the regulator. I haven't tried it out yet, but I'm pretty confident that it's gonna work. So what I have to do now is take all these apart, put some Teflon tape on every single one of these threads, screw it all together and see if it'll light up. So I'm going to go ahead, do all that and let's see if it works. step that needs to be completed before making this into a propane stove is inside of here let's see if I can get some light on it so inside of here you might not be able to see it but there is a flathead screw and it's right in the upper left portion of this knob so you take the knobs off and with a flathead screwdriver, you go in and you rotate it clockwise, and this will regulate the amount of propane that comes through, because if it was with natural gas, you'd want to loosen this screw up to allow more gas to come through. So since it's already set to that, you want to restrict the amount of propane that will come through, and by doing this, that will accomplish that. So now that we have it all hooked up, uh, I thought I was hearing a little bit of hissing and I went to go tighten some of the fittings, but the best way to find out if it's leaking is to get a spray bottle with some soapy water. So I sprayed it right here on this fitting and if you look closely, you can see some of the bubbles are coming out. So that means I have a little leak right here, but I've sprayed all the other fittings and there's no bubbles anywhere else. So once I tighten this down, we should have a complete system and we should be good to go. So now that we have it all hooked up, uh, I thought I was hearing a little bit of hissing and I went to go tighten some of the fittings, but the best way to find out if it's leaking is to get a spray bottle with some soapy water. So I sprayed it right here on this fitting and if you look closely, you can see some of the bubbles are coming out. So that means I have a little leak right here, but I've sprayed all the other fittings and there's no bubbles anywhere else. So once I tighten this down, we should have a complete system and we should be good to go. That's plugged in. Converter is on. All right. Okay, for the real moment of truth. That's terrifying. That seems like way too much propane. So when I pushed down on the knob, it sounded like way too much propane came out. So what I did is with the flathead screwdriver, like I did before, that little regulator inside of these knobs, I tightened them even more. Uh, pretty much all the way tight as I could and now when I push down on it it doesn't make that noise so now we'll see if it lights up 
That sounded like a lot, didn't it? I don't even have the igniter on. Okay, that's it. I am officially giving up on this product. Uh, if you saw in that video, when I pushed down on the knob, it sounded like a rush of propane came out and I have tightened down the regulators as far as it can go. I've changed the injectors to be LPG compliant. I've changed the fitting in the regulator. I've done all the steps that the manual says to do, that the online forums say to do. And upon further research, which has been days at this point, I found some forums and some reviews saying that it is a manufactured malfunction. There's multiple people that have said they've had the same issue, almost burning down their entire camper vans, their entire kitchens, their entire homes. So I wish I'd seen those reviews before I purchased this product, but I'm making this video to say, do not buy this. I'm going to have to figure out an entirely different, different solution. You know, I've, after multiple days of finding the right size fittings, the right size adapters, the right size hoses, which is on me, it's not the, the product's fault, but after going through that, all that, it still just adds to the disappointment. You know, looking at the reviews saying that, you know, if you've done everything correctly, it's the manufacturer's fault and you can't fix it. Uh, it is extremely frustrating. You know, I've devoted all this time and effort and research to get this thing to work and now it's at a point where it's completely out of my control and it is entirely frustrating and super, super dangerous. Um, what you didn't see on camera is I set the knob at the lowest flame setting. I clicked the igniter. I shouldn't have even done that, but I wanted to see if that was a normal sound that it was supposed to make because I've never used this product. But I, you know, clicked the igniter and instant flames came all the way out to where my hand was over the knob, immediately shut it off. And that was on the low power setting. If I had it on the high flame setting when I first ignited it, this whole van probably could have blown up. And that is just something I'm not going to be able to confidently sell to somebody or recommend anybody to buy. So sorry, Gasland, but you're getting a bad review and I'm putting this video on YouTube for everybody's safety. Uh, this should have never happened. And now I'm stuck in a position where I have already cut a hole for this size stove into my countertops. I've had all these set, you know, systems set up to where it's supposed to be used for this particular stove. Now I'm back to square one. Hopefully I won't have to cut a bigger hole or anything into my countertops that I just built. But I thought this van was going to be done in you know, by tomorrow. Once this stove was done, I was basically done with the van. And now I'm back to square one. So another thing, just adding to the frustration of this van build, which realistically this van build has been going, has been going really well. Like I really haven't run into any major issues. This is a major issue though. This is huge, extremely dangerous. And I will not feel safe having this product. Even if I did get a new one and it worked properly, just that on my conscience when I sell this fan to somebody does not sit well and I'm not going to use this product. So there's my rant. I, you know, this was supposed to be an instructional video on how to install it turned into a rant on how bad this product is, but it, it's super valuable information for anybody else who's trying to find this. Cause I believe I found this on a van life forum saying that this is a great two burner stove for a van and it runs off propane and everyone should use this. And I fell for it. I bought it and now I'm back to square one. So anyways, if you guys liked this video, if you found it helpful, I hope you guys did, please. I can't stress it enough. Do not do not buy this stove. I will be making an update video when I find a new stove and what I'm going to do and how I'm going to install that one. But anyways, this is where I'm going to leave this week's video. Not as uh, happy, I guess, as my other videos, but again, very important. So if you guys like this video, if you learned something, please let me know by leaving a comment down below, liking the video and subscribing with the notification bell. And on that, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.